Okay, here we are. We're going to be studying Kramer's Rule. It is January the 8th, the weekend of January the 8th, 2016. And Kramer's Rule is backed by popular demand, right, Victoria? Well, anyway, it's back. So here we have a system of two equations and two unknowns. And in the olden days, before we were thinking about matrices, we would solve this by substitution or elimination. Um, I haven't taught this this year. You should come knowing this, but I will review a quick rendition of how to solve this. If I multiply the top equation by negative 3 and the bottom by 4, that will create the x terms so that they will cancel out, zero out when I add them. So if I multiply this whole thing by minus 3, I get negative 12x plus 6y minus 30. And the bottom one I get 12x minus 20y equals 44. And when I add those two equations, I eliminate the x terms, thus the, the term elimination. And negative 20 plus 6 is going to be a negative 14y. Third, negative 30 and 44 is um, negative, no, positive 14. Divide, and I get y equals negative 1. All right, so we're looking for an ordered pair. So the y part is negative 1, and now I'm going to substitute negative 1 back into either equation. And when I do that, you can verify that I get a 2. All right, so 2, negative 1 is where these two equations intersect at that line. Let us look at the same one using Kramer's rule. And this is review for you. So let's see if we can get 2, negative 1 in a much more complex, long way. It does have computer applications, so here's opening the door to your computer world here. When you're finding the x term using Kramer's rule, you are going to put a determinant on the top of a fraction and a determinant on the bottom. The bottom one is always the same. It's always the coefficients, so 4, minus 2, 3, and minus 5. So that involves these. So we call those the coefficients. Now these terms, the constants, will come out in the top matrix for x. We're going to replace the x spot, the spot where the x um, coefficients would be is now going to be replaced by 10 over 11. Kramer noticed that this works. And y will stay the same, negative 2 and 5. So again, recap. The bottom of the fraction is a determinant using the coefficient matrix. 4, 3, negative 2, negative 5, unaltered. The top, when you're looking for x, the x spot is replaced by the constants and the y spot remains unaltered. Oops, did I put, this is a negative 5. All right, so let's do the y value. We'll set it up and we'll come back and do the determinants. The y value on the bottom is going to be the same determinant, the coefficient determinant, uh, just like x. And when we do the top of the y, can you foresee what I'm going to do? Where the y spot would be, I'm going to put in the constants. And where the x spot is, I put in the 4 and the 3 unchanged. And there is no z on this one. So, all right, so we are going to do these. These are determinants. So on the top, we have a negative 50 and a negative negative, remember going north is we're going to change the sign so the negative 22 becomes a positive 22 and I add those two 
22 and negative 50 is a negative 28. So that's the top of my fraction. On the bottom, I get negative 20 and a positive 6. And that, when I add those, I get negative 14. And when I take 28, negative 28, and divide it by negative 14, I do get a negative. This is a fraction, numerator, denominator. I do get negative 2. So, squishing in my y there. So that does match what we got. Oh, no, it doesn't. Should we got a positive 2? So let me check my work. All right, it's negative divided by negative. Sorry, positive 2, just like I did up here. All right, so moving right along. This co this um, determinant is the same as this, so I know already that we have a negative 14. And on the top here, I get 44 minus 30. And 44 minus 30 is a positive 14. Divided by a negative 14 is a negative 1. So using Kramer's rule, I get same thing, but I have to write the x term first to negative 1. All right, well, I will go over Kramer's rule for a 3 by 3. And the equations that we're trying to solve are written for you down here. So I'm going to move right along. You can pause to get that down in your comp book. I'm going to check your comp book. I really am. All right, so with that, I, this time I'm going to get an ordered triplet and an x value, comma, y, comma, z, and that's where these three planes intersect in a point. So they'll be all three. So we're going to set up the x value first. And using Kramer's rule, we are going to put in the top a matrix determinant and the bottom. The bottom one is the coefficients. So I'm going to get negative 1, 2, and 3. Here for y, I get 2, 0, negative 4. And for z, I get negative 3, 1, and 4. All right, so we're going to have to come up with that determinant. We'll work on that in a bit. Then for the, for the top, remember when we're solving for x, the constants take the place of the x, the x terms or the x coefficients. So 1, 0, 2 are the constants. So they're going to go in for x. And then the y will look just like that. And the Z will look just like that. All right, let me save some room. Let me actually do this one. So on the bottom here, I don't see a lot of zeros. So when there's not a lot of zeros, I'm going to do the determinant by repeating the columns. Going south here, we get a zero plus a six, and um negative 3 times 2 is minus 6, so plus 24. So all together, I'm going to get a 30 on that, on that part of it. And going north, we have 0. We have a positive 4, which becomes negative because we're going north. 4 times 2 times 2 is 16, so it'll be a negative 16. So on the top, I get a negative 20, and on the bottom, I get a 30. So when I add those two, I'm going to get, add the negative 20 and the 30, I'm going to get a 10. So on the bottom of the x, I get 10. Let's see what happens on the top. Now on the top, there's a lot of zeros, so I prefer to use the minors and cofactors method. So I'm going to pick this row, and I'm going to eliminate the row and column that the 1 is in. This, I'm going to pick the 1, and plus, minus, plus, minus, plus, minus. So if you do your checkerboard, the 1 is in a negative spot. So I'm going to write negative 1 times the matrix that remains, 1, 2, 2, negative 4, 
And the determinant of that is minus 4, minus 4. So together these add to minus 8 times the minus 1 is going to be a positive 8. So that's the tops, 8 over 10. So x equals x equals 4 fifths. All right, so that was our x. So down here in my x position, I put 4 fifths. All right, let's set up our y. And we don't have to do the bottom matrix again because it's going to be identical to the x. It's the coefficient matrix. It's going to have the same determinant every time. So we have a 30 on the bottom. So let's set up the top for the y. Can you do it? We're looking at this. So we're going to put in the regular x values. So the coefficients for x are unchanged and the coefficients for z are unchanged. When we're looking for the y coordinate, so it's only the y's that change. And what am I going to put in their place? I'm going to put in the constants 1, 0, 1, 0, 2. All right, I don't see a lot of zeros there, so I'm just going to do the repeating columns method. Negative 1, 2, and 3, 1, 0, 2. So going along this diagonal, I get negative 4. Going along this one, I get a 3. And going along this one, I get a negative 12. So negative 4 plus 3 is negative 1, and negative 12 gives me a wrong answer. So let me look, check my work again. Negative 1, 0, and 4 gives me 0. 1, 1, and 3 gives me 1 times 1 times 3 gives me 1 times 1 times 3 gives me a 3. And that does give me a negative 12. So 3 and a negative 12 gives me a negative 9. Going that direction, going this direction, I get a 0. And I didn't write mine very clearly. I guess it's a 2, a 1, and a negative. So my diagonal is a little crooked there. So that gives me a negative 2, which going north becomes a positive 2. 4, 2, and 1 is an 8, becomes a negative 8. 0, 2, and minus 8 gives me a negative 6. So negative 6 and negative 9 are added together to give me negative 15. So we already had, so that's the top of the fraction for y. And the bottom we have is 30. So when I put those together, I get y equals um, negative 15 over 30. Oh, I'm sorry, that wasn't 30, was it? On the bottom was a 10. All right, now that looks better. So dividing both by 5 to reduce, I get a y of negative 3 halves. So that's going to go up in my answer, negative 3 halves. So all we're left is a z. The bottom of that, so this is not a 30, I don't know why. So if I look up here, that court, the, um, the work on the bottom of the coefficient matrix was a 10. So same for z, it's going to be a 10. The, the determinant comes from the matrix on the top where the, when we're looking for z, we're going to have a, a negative 1, 2, and a 3 and a 2, 0, minus 4 from the coefficient matrix. But when we get to the z part, we're going to use, we're going to use these numbers, the constants, 1, 0, 2. All right, now this one has a lot of zeros in one of the rows. So I'm going to go ahead and take advantage of that and see what I get. I'll use this row. And so the 2 is plus, minus, plus, minus. So it's a minus 2. And the matrix that follows it is going to...